Hello, good morning everyone. Happy Monday. Bonjour et bienvenue. Good morning and welcome to the Kids Learning Club. Mondays. We did not do a Monday edition last week because it was Easter Monday. Uh, but you have your Monday edition back again. Uh, so today's Monday edition of the Kids Learning Club, as with all Mondays, is Music and Movement Monday. So we will do something with a little bit of movement and a little bit of music at the end of our Kids Learning Club. I hope everyone had a really nice uh, sunny weekend. Uh, did anybody get a chance to make a wacky walking stick? If you did, I'd love to see some pictures of your wacky walking stick that maybe you painted or decorated with yarn or other materials you have at home. Um, and maybe you got to go somewhere really special um, or you got to explore a new part of your backyard. If you have pictures of what you got to explore, you can share those along with us as well. All right, so let's dive into our Kids Learning Club. What is the first thing we do? Pop quiz? Riddle. <laughs> go. So our riddle, uh, last week's riddle, uh, was short and sweet. Uh, no one shared their answer with me, but I think someone has to have gotten it. I know you guys are pretty bright. So let's see. Last Friday's riddle was, people buy me to eat, but never actually eat me. People buy me to eat, but they never eat me. And the answer is plates and cutlery. Okay, so we buy plates, forks and knives and spoons to eat, but we never eat the plates, right? Unless you're Cookie Monster. Okay, so the rules do not apply if you're Cookie Monster because I've seen him eat a few plates in my day. All right, that was our riddle. Did you get it? Did someone in your family get it? I hope so. So for this week, um, we have the following riddle. What has four wheels and flies. What has four wheels and flies? Now, for those of us that have been around at the Kids Learning Club for a few weeks, you know that we like to play around with words for our riddles, okay? So think about if any of the words I just said could have a double meaning, okay? What has four wheels and flies? Wonderful! So for the last two weeks, we had fun facts related to the awesome human body and all the wonderful uh, ways that it works. And uh, this week, um, we are going to dive into space for our fun facts. All right. Um, so we let's let's uh, let's just get started, actually, uh, with our fun fact for this week. Um, I will actually share a quick uh, a video with you at the end, which is, there's a nice song, which is really funny, which will be a good, um, a good intro to space. Um, maybe you've never thought about opening up a book about space, or maybe you're not a person that's kind of looked up in the sky and, and wondered about what's out there. Um, and if that's the case, the video and song I'm going to share with you at the end uh, is a little song about our solar system, which is where the Earth, where we are, we're on the Earth, the sun and the moon are located, as well as other planets. So there are other planets other than Earth uh, out in space and the galaxy of stars, okay? So all of that is out in what we call outer space. And um, there's a little intro song, okay, that, that uh, will give you some fun facts about each of the planets and our solar system, but I'll save that for the video, okay? Uh, for today's quick fun fact about space, and in light of music and movement Monday, I would like to share with you that in space, it is completely silent. If you go out in space, it is completely silent. Okay, so the music that we're going to be doing uh, at the end, if we were to sing it on the moon, it would just come out of our mouths and boop, stop. Okay, so we're gonna do a little space fact, a little bit of, of uh, sound facts for a second. We can hear sounds on Earth because we have an atmosphere and we have uh, air. Sound travels through the air. In space, there is no atmosphere, okay? You get atmospheres once you enter planets like the Earth 
um, or Mars, I believe, also has an atmosphere. And, and then there's, there's air, different airs there, okay? Um, but in space, no air, no way for sound to travel, so it is 100% silent. Uh, hello! I see some of our friends here are saying hello. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right, so there's your fun fact, okay? Uh, maybe you could turn into a riddle for a family member. Uh, you could, I don't know, make a music joke. Say something like, uh, hey, mom and dad, how loud would it be if I played the radio on the moon? Ha ha, just a joke because you can't hear it because there's no atmosphere and space is silent. Okay, there you go. Uh, this is what happens when Miss Adelaide makes jokes on the spot. They're not too funny. Okay, <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to leave the funniness uh, to, or the humor uh, to our poets for today. Uh, we're coming back to one of our favorite poets, uh, Mr. Ken Nesbitt. I have shared some poems uh, by him uh, in the Kids Learning Club. And when I stumbled upon this one, I thought it was just so great uh, because it really does a good job of playing with words. Now, I'm not going to give you any more clues. I want you to get a feel for it when you listen, okay? Now, this one's called, I've Seen My Kitchen Sink. All right? There's a clue in the title. I've Seen My Kitchen Sink by Ken Nesbitt. Let's see if you can tell how he plays with words here. I've Seen My Kitchen Sink. I saw my garden rose. I'm not sure why my eye drops, but I think my nostril knows. I've had a root beer float. I've watched a lemon drop. I've listened to a ginger snap and heard a soda pop. I've seen a hot dog stand. I saw a salad bowl. I've even seen a pretzel twist and watched a dinner roll. I've seen a great home run. I saw a big house fly. I've even seen a barefoot race and watched a bolo tie. I've seen a long ski jump. I've heard a loud bell hop. I saw a birthday party and I watched an antique shop. I've seen a belly dance. I've seen a quick fox trot. I think that's what my chain saw, but I'm sure my rope did not. What is this nonsense? This poem didn't make any sense. <laughs> if you're lost and confused, that's okay. So he, I'm gonna read just the first one for you. And I'm going to put what we call emphasis on different words. So I'm gonna make maybe one word uh, sound a little louder or pop a little bit. And let's see if you notice uh, what happens, okay? All right, let's try this again. I've seen my kitchen sink. I saw my garden rose. I'm not sure why my eye drops, but I think my nostril knows. Did you see what was going on there? I've had a root beer float. I've watched a lemon drop. I've listened to a ginger snap and I heard a soda pop. So if you're noticing, I paused a little bit before the last word because all of the last words, when I pause before them, you can get a feel of them as verbs or what we call action words, okay? Um, when we say a kitchen sinking, okay? So uh, to sink is to go under, okay? Um, dropping, we all know what dropping is and we also heard the verbs snap and popping. Okay, so those are verbs. They're action words, right? Or they make us think of sounds. But if I don't put that pause on the word, then we start to get a little confused and those verbs can sound like nouns or uh, things. So nouns are people, places, or things. In this case, they're always things. Okay, or an idea here. Okay, so let's see if you can see what happens. I've seen my kitchen sink. I saw my garden rose. I'm not sure why my eye drops, but I think my nostril knows. I've had a root beer float. I've watched a lemon drop. I've listened to a ginger snap and heard a soda pop. 
okay? So the kitchen sink is where we go wash the dishes. A garden rose is a rose flower that would be in your garden. Eye drops, okay? We might put those, it's a liquid that we might put in our eyes if our eyes are, are, uh, are dry. When he says nostril nose, he's playing on the word nose and also he knows, she knows, okay? A root beer float is a drink, okay? And then lemon drops, ginger snaps, soda pops are other things that we can eat or drink, okay? Isn't that fun? Okay, I'm gonna just read the poem one more time just so you can have a little bit of fun hearing what's going on and then we'll move on, all right? So for those of us enjoying it, great. Uh, if the second time is making you feel a little antsy, you can just get up and jump and move around, okay? <laughs> all right, because we will be moving around in a minute anyway. I've Seen My Kitchen Sink by Ken Nesbitt, or I've Seen My Kitchen Sink by Ken Nesbitt. I've seen my kitchen sink. I saw my garden rose. I'm not sure why my eye drops, but I think my nostril knows. Knows? I've had a root beer float. I've watched a lemon drop. I've listened to a ginger snap, and I heard a soda pop. I've seen a hot dog stand. I saw a salad bowl, like bowling. I've even seen a pretzel twist and watched a dinner roll. I've seen a great home run. I saw a big house fly. I've even seen a barefoot race and watched a bolo tie. A bolo is a type of hat. I've seen a long ski jump. I've heard a loud bell hop. I've, I saw a birthday party and I watched an antique shop. I've seen a belly dance. I've seen a quick fox trot. I think that's what my chain saw, but I'm sure my rope did not. Like a knot by Ken Nesbitt. So cool. All right, I love it. <laughs> I hope you loved it too. It's such a fun poem. Again, I encourage you uh, older writers to play around with words and write some songs, write some poems, or even do those sorts of things if you like to write stories, okay? You can play around with words if you, in your stories. All right, uh, so for our activity challenge for today, um, Miss Sarah and I were working with a new idea. I'll be honest, it was completely Miss Sarah's idea, okay? <laughs> I just said, that's awesome. So Miss Sarah had a great idea of uh, getting an activity challenge theme uh, for each day of the week for this week. And then we'll see how it goes. The theme idea is that we're gonna give you an activity challenge with three ways to play it, okay? And we'll do that each day. And it's going to be with things that you probably already have at home. Very nice and easy so that you can start uh, playing and having fun right away, okay? So today's play three ways uh, involves the kitchen sink. Ah, oh, how perfect. And I did a poem about the kitchen sink. We're on a roll today. Um, so we're going to fill up our kitchen sink with water um, and have some playing fun. What you can do is dump in a bunch of measuring cups, different bowls, um, syringes. By that is, um, when we say syringes, maybe in the baby medicine, sometimes you get a syringe, you're not using it anymore. You could use it for water play. Um, and you could play around, uh, just splashing around the water, playing with measurement. How many measuring cups does it take for me to put this in? You could pretend that you're baking, okay? Um, great for our, our little kids. Water play is always fun. Uh, you could also, place a bunch of your favorite objects that are allowed to go in the water and that won't get damaged in the water and see if they will sink or float. It's kind of a little science experiment. Maybe take a guess before you dump something in. Uh, is it going to sink or is it going to float? Um, and then for those items that are floating, it's always fun to try to put them underwater, see them bob back up. Um, and the next uh, idea for playing uh, with water in the kitchen sink is to do some color mixing. Now, how could you do that? Um, playing with colors and seeing what happens when colors mix. You would uh, put food coloring in your ice cube tray, so uh, mom and dad can help you with that because it can get a little messy. So just put uh, maybe two drops of food coloring in the ice cube tray. 
you make ice cubes that are different colors. And then uh, once they're frozen, uh, so that will take a little bit of time, once they're frozen, you pop them into your sink full of water and put one color in at a time. We suggest starting with yellow, the lighter color, if you have yellow food coloring, and then toss in your blue. What's gonna happen when the blue ice cube melts with the yellow? I'm not gonna tell you, that's for you to find out, okay? And then add some other colors and see what happens. Now, let's be honest about two possible dilemmas. Um, number one, if your sink is full of dirty dishes and you still need to clear that out in order to get this to happen, I've been there, okay? Uh, then you can just do this activity in a tub on the floor with some uh, towels around, okay? Uh, it just means that uh, little ones won't get a chance to turn the water on and off with the tap. If you want that to be part of the game, then of the activity, then stay at the sink. If you don't want that to happen either, you can just do this activity in a tub or bucket on the floor, okay? Great, so there's one idea, things you can do at the kitchen sink or things you can do with water play. Um, there's three ideas there for you. If you come up with anything else that you love to do in um, a water play environment, you can share it below. So maybe someone else might like the idea. Okay, and they'll try it too. All right, so for our uh, Monday activity, we always do a little bit of music and movement. Okay, and I just get up to encourage some movement for you and uh, share a song with you uh, to sing along at home with your family. And um, if any of you, because I know some of us are watching from different countries, if there's a song that you like to sing uh, at school or that moms and dads remember when they were little, uh, you can let me know and I can try to share it. Um, if I need to learn a new language to sing it, I will try my best, okay? But if there's anything fun uh, that you like in your own country, I would be more than willing to share it with others, okay? So, uh, for today's song, I'm gonna get up here. That means you all need to get up too. So everybody up, no comfy chairs, no comfy couches. All right, we're up, 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 okay? Let's just give ourselves a little bit of a wiggle, little stretch, okay? Maybe you need to get your legs up, okay? Stretch your body a little bit. Oh boy, I don't know where you are, but it's still morning over here and I'm still feeling a little bit tight. Okay, great. So for today's song, we are doing a classic called The Hokey Pokey, okay? Uh, this is really, really fun in a small or large groups. If you have more than one person at home doing this, you guys can get in a circle or face each other. It's really fun, or you can do it on your own. I do this by myself sometimes, be just because it's fun. So this is how the song goes, all right? We're gonna use our uh, right hand, left foot, and then our whole body. So for those of you that know the song, you know what I'm saying. Uh, for those of you that don't, you can just predict, okay? So, left, did I say left hand, right foot, and whole body? Left hand, right foot, whole body. Okay, let us start. You put your left hand in, you take your left hand out. You put your left hand in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your right foot in, you take your right foot out. You put your right foot in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your whole body in, you take your whole body out. You put your whole body in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Okay, so what's super fun about that very simple song is that you can do it with different parts of your body. You can get really silly. You can put your nose in. You can put one finger in. You can put two arms in, your head, whatever, a teddy bear, okay? And you can go on and on with this song as long as you want. Um, you can encourage different people in your family to call out the next thing that comes in. Uh, moms and dads, this is a great way to practice right and left, okay? So you want to practice right and left hands and arms, an entire side of the body. Put your right 
your left ear in, okay, whatever uh, you want to do. And it gets our kiddos thinking about that. If you are practicing a second language, comme le français, um, et tu veux essayer avec um, des mots dans cette langue, and you want to try with words in that language uh, to get kids thinking about their body part words in that language, you can do it too, okay? So, let's do the song just one more time now that you know, okay? With hands and feet only, all right? Just for fun. Ready? One, two, a one, two, three. Put your right hand in, you take your right hand out. You put your right hand in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Foot. Put your left foot in, you put your left foot out. You put your left foot in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Okay, I obviously got very excited about uh, turning myself around there. I missed the shaking. All right, well, you have a new song for your repertoire, some ideas to uh, play with it, and we've given you an activity challenge for the day. I hope you have fun, and send us some pictures um, if you get to take part in any of the things we've shared with you today, and I'd love to hear you guess that riddle. If you need a uh, memory jog, the riddle for today was, what has four wheels and flies? If you think you have the answer, put it in the comments for us. All right, take care, have a great Monday, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.